Hi everyone, Polly here, the DIY car repair expert. I'm going to be answering a lot of the common questions I get about tools, like what are the right tool brands to buy? What toolbox should I get? What are good tools for beginners? How to get tools for free? And even how you can make money buying tools. Now, I love hearing from you guys, and I do answer all questions personally for years to come after I have made my videos, so please comment below if you already have some tools or if you wanna discuss some tool that I didn't cover. Also, you should know that I receive no incentive like money of any kind for talking about or recommending certain brands. You are only getting my honest opinion here as in all my videos. As a former professional automotive service technician, I have a lot of great tools, but you can do most simple repairs with only a small selection of them. And that's what I'm going to help you understand. Once you get started, your toolkit will grow naturally as you take on new projects, helping you save money by buying tools to do the job while learning, getting a sense of self-satisfaction from doing the job yourself, and knowing the job is getting done right is what I'm all about, and I'm going to help you get there, okay? Now, all of the repair work I do is done in my garage and in my driveway, just like you. With some direction, the repairs that I demonstrate you can definitely do yourself. That's why it's so important you subscribe to my channel and watch these videos in their entirety so that I can pass along all of my trade secrets to you. Let's start with toolboxes. Now this is actually important because it's your go-to place for your tools and this is how you'll keep things organized, which is surprisingly important. Keep them organized and you'll easily find what you need when you need it. And you won't find yourself buying the same tools twice because you thought you lost it. Now you don't have to start out with much of anything really. Something simple like this box from Craftsman or some off-brand will work fine for maybe your first year or so. But as you accumulate more, you'll want to spread out your tools, making them easier to find. And as you accumulate more and more, this becomes a big deal. Turns out you can cram enough tools in a small box to fill a large box, but the large one makes them much easier to organize and find. As your tool collection grows into one of these drawer boxes, look for drawers two and a half inches thick. This allows you to put in organizers like these. I don't like the preform foam inserts that come with some tools because although they look cool, they can take up more room. Lowe's and Harbor Freight offer these racks, rubber mats, and standing dividers. You want it organized, but easy to remove and replace the tools. Check out my other video on toolbox organization for more on that. I have five tips for buying toolboxes. One, you'll want a couple deep drawers, but shallow drawers are king, so get a box that is mostly shallow drawers. You don't need a lot of these narrow drawers, but a few is fine. Once you get a larger toolbox, you want them broken down into something that looks more like this. Two, get a box with ball bearing drawer slides. Three, look for two swiveling lockable casters and two stationary. Four, you'll want a deep top tray for socket racks. And five, these get stupidly heavy. So getting one with handles makes for easy moving. A common way to go is to get a top box and eventually a bottom box as your kit grows. Some like to have a box with a work surface they can wheel out to their car and work from. I find that too small, but that's just me. I've owned the most expensive toolboxes made and they really are just a pointless purchase. Can you imagine spending 6K on a toolbox? I've done that. Functionally, these are just as good as the more expensive brands and meet my criteria. This toolbox is awesome, but most of the tools here I had crammed into this smaller box and this one just spreads it all out so they're much easier to manage. For these larger boxes, shop around. Check out the holiday sales. Sometimes Lowe's has better pricing on things, so don't automatically think Harbor Freight is going to be the cheapest route. Also, Craigslist, local auctions, and garage sales are an awesome way to score a large used toolkit with a toolbox. They may be used, but who cares? Most tools will outlive us anyway. Remember, this toolbox is an investment and it's gonna keep your tools organized 
and last a lifetime. So buy smart. Now I'm just focusing on hand tools, unlike a jack or a power tool, which I'll talk about in another video. Now you'll need to pick whether you want to go with a metric or SAE set of tools. For the most part, unless you're working on old American cars like from the 70s, metric tools are going to be what you're going to be using. So let's focus on that. One of the most important things to focus on are sockets. There are shallow and deep sockets, and you're going to want both because you're going to find uses for both of them. Also, the cheaper socket sets often come with a lot of 12-point sockets, which are weaker and tend to round off the really tight and rusty bolts. So I always focus on getting six-point sockets. Now you have quarter inch, three-eighths inch, half inch, and even some three-quarter inch drive sets out there. You don't really need the bigger sizes just yet. So to begin with, you want to focus on three-eighths drive and quarter inch drive sets. Starting with the quarter inch drive sets, you want to get as complete a set as possible, starting at like a six millimeter and going up to 10 millimeter. Then for the three eighths drive set, you want from eight millimeter up to 22 millimeter. You may not find a set that has all of these, but you can fill in the missing ones at the same time. Like if you buy from Lowe's where they also sell sockets individually. So you have everything covered between this variety of sockets here. So you'll also want these extension bars and a nice variety for each of your quarter inch and three eighths drive sets. You'll also need one of these universal joints for the nuts and bolts that are hard to get to. If you find a set with a lot of Torx bits or Allen bits, those are fine, but you won't be using a lot of those unless you're working on German or some Asian cars or motorcycles. So you can hold off on those for now. When you get your half inch drive set for the larger stuff like lug nuts and suspension bolts, you need to buy a good breaker bar. This comes in super handy for getting those stuck on bolts loose. Again, you want to choose six point sockets only and you don't really need to worry about deep sockets for half inch drive stuff just the shallow will be fine the chrome sockets are also what you want the flat black sockets that you see are for impact tools and that's something you can look at later but for right now chrome is gold for you and that's going to do it for sockets so let's talk about wrenches you want to get yourself a good set and just like sockets you want a complete set of metric wrenches you're gonna to wanna to start at six millimeter and go all the way up to 22 millimeter. I like these combination wrenches. They have an open end and a box end. These are best because they are the most versatile and there's a trick you can use to lock two together to get some extra leverage. So go with the combo wrenches like these. Also, there are six point box ends and 12 point box ends you're going to want the more common 12 point box ends. There are also very short and very long ones. Just get the normal length ones for now and you can grow your kit into those if you need them down the road. They also have these ratcheting wrenches. These are actually really great and they have fixed and pivoting ends to choose from. But the basic set again is a good place to start. Just make it a complete set then grow into maybe the ratcheting set later because eventually you'll need two wrenches of the same size for some projects. Then we should look at screwdrivers and pliers and side cuts. For these also, you want a good set with a variety of sizes for Phillips head and flat head screwdrivers, preferably with a smooth handle so they don't hurt your hands when you're using them. I like the screwdrivers that have magnetic tips like the ones from Sonic which uh, help you start and keep screws from falling. You want a large four pound hammer and a small ball peen hammer, a selection of pry bars, a pair of large and needle nose vice grips. With the pliers, be sure to get blunt nose and needle nose and a good set of side cuts. Okay, then there's the Father's Day specials. Yeah, just don't buy the gimmicky does it all type tools. They basically don't work very well compared to these other tools I've shown you, which are the right tool for the job. And what good is a tool that doesn't work? 
free tools. Okay, let's talk about free tools. This may be the best kept secret, and it really means the difference between making it possible for you to do the job yourself or not. Some specialty tools are pretty expensive, and really, you may only use them once in your lifetime. So if you can borrow that specialty tool, you're in good shape to tackle it yourself. Fortunately, both AutoZone and Advanced Auto offer a borrow a tool program that costs you nothing. You heard it correctly, free tools. You put down a deposit and it's yours. All you need to do is ask. Even if you live in a remote area, AutoZone will ship the tools to you and you get your deposit back when you return them. Or you can keep the tools with your deposit as payment. It's a pretty sweet deal. Common stuff like power steering pullers, those rear brake jobs that require the piston to be spun in, spring compressors, and AC charging stations. It's all there, folks, and it's free. So before you count yourself out, check out these options to see if you can borrow the tool first. You may be surprised. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Want to know more? Comment below. Also, be sure and check out my upcoming videos on Toolbox and Garage Space Organization. See you later.